Hi, I'm Craig Tomos from Startup Stories. Today I'm with Graham Hemsworth and Brett Peterson of Zen Enterprise to talk about their startup journey. Okay, so Brett and Graham, can you tell me a little bit about your startup? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so Zen Enterprise has been in operation now for three years. Um, we started with a product that had been in existence for some time. Um, and Graham had built the product um, nearly 20 years and 20 years ago now, Graham. Mm -hmm. So, um, Graham, do you want to just provide some background no, on the initial product? Yeah, I mean, so um, oh, some some time ago, uh, identified a need to um, bring some certainty to uh, to uh, the the whole billing arrangements for for large scale outsourcing. Um, one of the one of the things was back in the in the late late nineties, um, there was a, a major move by the government to uh, to outsource, um, especially IT, in quite a large way. And uh, looked at that and went, well, that, that's fair enough, um, irrespective of, of, of my personal considerations around it. But something needs to be done to, in order to ensure that people get bang for buck, and mm -hmm. that, that so that you know these large multinationals aren't aren't. Uh, uh, billing for things that they're not getting and uh, are not are not supplying, I should say. So, put together a uh, a, a system back 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 then um, to to do that. Uh, it's a fairly fairly comprehensive one. Um, so, in a nutshell, I'd, I'd call it uh, invoice reconciliation management mm -hmm. is the core of what the product does. But Graham and I have been doing independent um, consulting for. Um, many years now, and I came across Graham about firstly about not a, twelve years ago yeah, in immigration when we were doing some consulting work, um, and I'd sort of kept in contact with Graham over the years. And about three years ago, through my different consulting engagements, I noticed there was a real need in the marketplace um, for invoice reconciliation software, particularly with the large complex contracts that are being managed. Um, so I called Graham and I said, "Have you still got that that software?" And he said, yeah, I've got it sitting on my rack server at home, as you do. Um, and so we sort of started from there. And I said, well, it needs some updating. We certainly need to change the front end and the user experience. So we um, brought in a third party to assist us with that. And we've modernised the software and we've got a unique offering in the marketplace now. Yeah, so so really it's, a, it's an interesting situation because you know, clearly, um, Graham, you identified the problem 20 years ago. Mm. Um, and you create a solution for it, but the market presumably wasn't ready. In me well, in some regards, you're you're absolutely right. That there, um, there's been a, a a process of maturing in, in the marketplace. Um, I think we were probably a little bit ahead of our time in in that regard. So whilst there uh, there was uh, an understanding of the requirement for it, there wasn't a real uh, a real um, desire to go and, and do that. Um, that's changed a lot. The outsourcing environment in, in, in Canberra and in Australia for that matter is much more mature and people are start, have woken up to um, the, the need for doing this. Um, we've since, since uh, over the last uh, three years we've almost rebuilt this thing from the ground, ground up. Mm. So it's um, uh, the Fundamental principles are the same, um, but it's a it's a it's a it's a bigger and uglier beast by, by a long way. <laughs> a far more modern system, oh, I presume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so so um, you know, you clearly you knew what the problem was. You've been working in this space for a while. So why did you decide you know to to take this out as a business in its own right rather than sure. say you know sell it to a, a larger organisation? Sure. So, Graham already had the software. Um, we invested heavily in updating and modernising the software. And then we already had, between both of us, um, a core range of clients in our consulting fields that related to what the software could assist with in the process automation side of things and the validation of the invoices for the big outsource contracts. So we basically utilised our network, our consulting network, to see where the software could get some traction in the marketplace. Um, because we had the software and we owned the software, we developed a, a partnership between ourselves as part of that, and I'd say trust is the biggest thing mm -hmm. there, yeah. probably the biggest factor for success for us so far. Um, and we are able to utilise that network that we had um, in government agencies to look at potential clients to see whether they'd utilise the software or not. 
Okay. So what are some of the challenges you've, you've encountered in the last three years, you know, sort of running it as a startup? Yeah, so um, a lot of challenges in terms of competing priorities and competing mm-hmm. time. Both of us still need to put <laughs> food on the table. Yes. So we've still got other consulting work that we still need to do. Um, we've found challenges in ensuring that we keep the software um, relevant to what the marketplace wants and needs. So we've certainly had challenges there. And make, also making sure the software is usable because it's great from a technical perspective to add a lot of functionality into the software, but if it's not usable by the actual end users and they don't like it, then um, it's really just shelfware. So we've certainly had a lot of challenges from that perspective, and there's been a healthy tension, if you like, between Graham and myself um, in that perspective. Yes. And uh, yeah, we've had we've had our difficult and challenging times, but mm. it's, wor- it's it's spending the time to work, making sure we allocate the time to work through any issues that we've got um, that really has allowed us to get to the point that we're at at the moment. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, so having having faith in, in in what we're doing and what we're what we're putting out there has been a, a, a big big thing because um, we, so we, we we've sunk an incredible amount of our own time, effort, and, and funds into this thing, um, and you don't do that unless you've got some to, uh, some fairly solid faith in in what you're doing. Mm. Um, so, uh, and and sometimes to be honest, the challenge is maintaining that. Yes. It, you know, it, this is it's been a it's been a fairly long haul. Mm. Um, uh, it's, it's it's not another one of these miracle overnight successes. <laughs> That, that usually, if the truth be known, take many years, um, and and so maintaining that motivation, that enthusiasm, um, you know, it 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 it's not been hard, but it, but it's it, it it's it's been something we've needed to consider as well. And hey, look, breaking in, especially into the Canberra market, um, with the procurement re- uh, requirements of the Commonwealth, yeah, that that that's got us. That that brings up a whole raft of its own. Own, own challenges and idiosyncrasies. So, hmm. yeah, these are things we deal with. Yeah, so um, you've been trying to break into the Canberra market and mm-hmm. obviously you're working with other organisations as well. How, how have you gone? How's that process been? Yeah, so it's been an interesting process. Um, government likes us to um, be on panels and so it's a little bit of chicken or egg in, in terms of that. So what we've had to do is develop channel partners. Mm-hmm. So we've actually gone to existing organisations that are on panels and we've looked at using them as resellers for our product mm-hmm. um, and that's worked quite well for us. So we got onto the government um, cloud panel which was um, yes. recently announced and we actually got on there with Veritech um, who are a local local IT organisation so we support local as much as we possibly can. Um, and then we've also partnered with Dimension Data um, as a reseller also. Um, so and that's worked well for us. Um, uh, what we did is we secured a proof of concept with a government client uh, about two years ago, and that proof of concept allowed us to prove to the client, and it was a large government agency, that the software would work for them and deliver the return on investment for them in terms of efficiency, uh, in terms of reduced risk, in terms of um, financial benefits to the organisation, and we we're actually able to prove over a 15 month period that we could deliver them a full return on investment and payback period um, on investing in the software within 12 months. Now that's, that's a good payback period. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I guess also, you know, when, when you actually put it in dollar terms, you are saving these large contracts millions of dollars. Correct. Yeah. 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 And I mean, so that, and that has been, in many regards, the underpinning reason for doing this um, was, was around uh, trying to get the best bang for the buck. Um, we've... Uh, um, work, work. I think quite closely with uh, with this particular department uh, that, uh, over the last uh, what, fifteen months, whatever it was. Mm. Um, and part part of what um, we've come actually delivered to them is not just not just a proof of concept, but it's also um, bringing that mindset in, 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 in into into line. And so um, they now under sort of going from um, the, the point of well, that's yeah, that's great in theory. To wow, I really understand what it is that you're talking about, what we should be doing, and and uh, and, and making inroads into that. So we're we're looking at that as being um, a, a bit of a snowball effect as that um, mindset mm. um, promulgates to other departments as well. Are, are you seeing signs of that already? Absolutely. We've great. got a number of agencies 
that are actually really interested in the software. Um, so they've ex expressed um, interest in procuring um, Zen Enterprise software, um, but they want to see how we go with the proof of concept and how we go. We're in a procurement right now um, with a government agency and we're in contract negotiations at the moment. So depending on how that goes and if that flows through into um, a, a long-term engagement, then other agencies want to look at how that goes So and they'll engage with us on that basis. So yeah. really we're at a crossroads at the moment in terms of um, that, that perspective, um, but we're certainly seeing um, a lot of opportunity out there in, in, with government agencies um, around the utilisation of the Zen software. And, and it's an, another one of those challenges that um, they, people understand it, but they're, sometimes they're a bit hesitant about putting, being the first uh, cab off the rank. So it's a, a case of de demonstrate, you know, I understand, um, proof of concept, I, I get it, um, and it, moving it to sale, so then we, others will go, oh yes, we're ready to jump onto the bandwagon as well. Yeah, it, it's interesting because, you know, that's traditionally what uh, large companies do. It's hard for a startup to often move through that process mm. on the sort of time frames that um, you know, government agencies in particular move through. So that means you, know, you obviously have to do a lot to support yourselves in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So how have you managed that tension you know, in, and also that it takes a while to actually get a win? You know, how, how do you actually manage that inside yourselves? Well, well from my perspective, um, I make sure I do enough consulting work to pay the mortgage and to pay the bills and put food on the table. Um, and then I allocate, so it's an opportunity cost if you like, the other time into the Zen Enterprise um, solution to make sure that we can get that working. Mm -hmm. And I think Graham's is similar. Yeah, I mean, so in many regards, this is about discipline. Mm -hmm. about, um, so yeah, we, we have full-time jobs. We both own our own companies in, in addition to that. So we have all those responsibilities that come that come about um, outside of the, 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 the Zen paradigm. Um, what it means though is being able to say, well, okay, well, I've got this, this work that needs to be done. I will hive off this from my normal consulting billable hours and I will work on that. So yeah, you take an opportunity cost there, but you know, we're in it for the long term. Yeah. I think it's loving what you're doing. We, we're both so passionate about um, Zen Enterprise and about the product set. We love it. Um, it's not even, I don't even consider it work. Um, although Graham probably does sometimes. <laughs> Usually at about one o'clock in the morning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's really having that passion um, that is, I see as the key to success, knowing that there's something that can actually help clients um, and putting the financial aspects aside um, is, really, is really the key because we enjoy what we're doing. Um, and so no matter what the end result, we've gone down, we've gone on a journey and we've done everything we possibly could to make succeed. So um, yeah, that's, I think that's the, one of the main considerations um, that any tech startup has to make um, when they're looking at um, whether they want to make that, uh, whether they want to take that leap or not. Um, you really have to love what you're doing. You have to know mm. that, I, I think you have to really know that you've got something that the marketplace is going to want. Um, and you've got to be passionate about it and put the financial aspects um, as a secondary component, if you like. Yeah, and you, and you clearly have also built up a really strong partnership as well, mm -hmm. and, and building up that trust and respect between the founders is absolutely critical when you're in things oh, for the long haul. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, look, it, 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 if we didn't trust each other um, to an incredible le amount, um, this, this would never have gotten off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, mm. you, you, you can't... You can't you know, you, you hear so often about um, partnerships falling, ap falling apart because of uh, disagreements or, or, or a breaking of trust and things like that. Um, you know, that, 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 that's, uh, that's a problem that I don't think we've got um, purely because we've known each other for a fairly link lengthy period of time. And, you know, he tells me he wants to do one thing, I tell him he wants to do something else, and we work, We usually work it out in the middle somewhere. And it is like a marriage, seriously. <laughs> it is. And it's like any successful marriage, there's compromise, but we both have our say, and we both work, it, work through the issues. And it's as much about the psychology and putting in the time and the effort. Um, otherwise, it would have fallen over. And it doesn't matter what the doesn't matter what technology or product or solution if you're in partnership with someone 
the relationship part is that important. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the most important aspect. Yeah. The, the other part too is that we've got, um, whilst we've got a lot, of, lot in common as far as certain aspects of our knowledge base, we've, we've also got things that, that um, Brett specialises in and things that I specialise in. Um, and, and because of that, we've, we basically have fallen into specific roles. So, you know, I, I look after the, the development. Brett looks after the, uh, the uh, user side of things, the, the client side of things. And that kind of kind of works. So mm -hmm. I don't tread too much on his toes, and he he not on mine. Mm. Um, and the the bits that we've got in common um, actually make us stronger mm. because we actually understand where each other's coming from. Mm -hmm. And you share the success. That's exactly yep. right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So uh, what have you uh, learnt along the way? Like obviously you've had companies before, and 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 you've sort of done the whole company thing. Mm -hmm. But what have you learnt in, in in this particular company that is new? Yeah, so I've learnt a lot about the whole sales and business development aspects um, and putting effort into that. So when I was doing the initial research around tech startups, I saw that there was a lot of effort into the funding and the investment side, the venture capital, et cetera, et cetera. We've taken a deliberate path uh, or made a deliberate choice not to go down that path mm -hmm. and to self-fund as much as possible to retain control, et cetera. Um, hopefully we'll be highly successful and we'll get to a point where we will need to, we will require some significant investment that we won't be able to fund and we will obviously be at a stage then where we need to do that. But certainly, um, certainly putting the focus and effort actually onto the client side, spending a lot of time with clients. So we did a number of workshops with a number of agencies just working through the software and working through the processes they work through, understanding the client issues, understanding the client space, I found was 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 key because we were very confident about our product. So I was taking their viewpoint and not just trying to sell the product in terms of its features, mm. but actually how it'll deliver benefits and make their job easier and make life easier for them. Yeah. And if I've learned anything, it's been patience. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and we've both still got a way to go there. That's exactly right. Yeah. But 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 um, I get the impression that you're seeing s at least some light at the end of the tunnel. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, a lot of the development work that's happened has been through the funding of the proof the the, the f um, proof of concept that we was fully funded. So that funded our out of pocket costs. So there's no better way to fund um, your your costs than through a client actually paying for it. And that's yeah. that's really the proofs in the pudding then mm. to know that you've actually got something that's viable out there. Yeah, they always say it's better if your customers actually fund your product than you have investors funding your product. That's exactly, and that's exactly the path mm. we wanted to go down because otherwise it's still an academic exercise. We still yep. don't know what the appropriate price point or what the point in which customers are actually going to engage is at um, from a commercial perspective, and that's the way we're able to work that out and find that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and having the, uh, having the customer fund the proof of concept um, gives us a degree of confidence that again we're on the right road because if, if a client is willing to put money up irrespective of whether it's a POC or, or, or a purchase um, you're obviously doing something right. We know the market space really well too so we're able to as part of the proof of concept even it, um, with the technology we're able to analyse the processes and tasks that they undertook to do their work and we're actually able to provide them with suggestions to standardise those processes to even get more mm -hmm. advantage in automating their workflow through the technology and through using Zen. Well, it's interesting because you, you've basically got one of those business-to-business, back-end style, not sexy at all products oh, yeah. that is essential yeah. for businesses and, yes. and, and a lot of it is about systems. Correct. So have you done a lot with systems in your own business? Graham has. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I... I uh, my other company that looks uh, is a consulting company, and we I basically got people working f for me. I hate doing book work and all the rest of it. I, I love playing with numbers, but I, I the, so um, automated automated a lot of that. Um, so that sort of that same sort of disciplines that uh, went into Zen went into, into that. So um, this is not um, automation and systemization of of manu boring manual tasks is um, not, uh, it's uh, very familiar territory for us. So mm. we, we've done a lot of that. Yeah. 
and you know that that's uh, in many regards um, that's the biggest that's a very big selling point for it because if we can remove a lot of the um, real donkey work that sometimes people have to do that frees them up to do more interesting but also more b beneficial work so it brings them up the value chain a bit more um, free freeing up staff from from doing laborious tasks to bring to uh, doing things that are actually of value to the organization yeah yeah well, better use of their time oh, it's better absolutely. for staff retention mm. and it saves a lot of money mm. absolutely yeah we we'll also recognize that there are competitors in the market space and we are going into the ERP world, which mm -hmm. is where the big software companies are. So what we've done is we've ensured we've got integrators with yep. the big software products like SAP, and mm -hmm. through our proof of concept, we're able we're actually able to demonstrate our integrator with SAP. So um, we've ensured that our system, while it's a best of breed, if you like, um, easily integrates into existing ERP systems and existing architectures and software implementations um, in government mm -hmm. agencies. Yeah. But, um, but I think also an interesting thing, I was talking to somebody um, uh, earlier who was actually in game development, and he said one of the keys is to differentiate yourself in the market mm. is to do one thing really, really well. Yeah, right. And I think a, a lot of what you do is you do one thing really, really well, better that's than correct. an SAP, better than an IBM or anyone else correct. out there. Yep, we do. Yeah. And that's a really interesting point because when we started marketing it, we started talking about it as contract management software. Well, actually, the strength is in, is in the number crunching and analytical capability. And so it was actually the invoice reconciliation space that we really have a specialisation in mm. and crunching those hundreds of thousands of records that support the big outsourced agreements um, between government and, and, and vendors. But our software is equally applicable to the private sector as well. Mm. So um, what we need to do really is, is, is build up our product set in the Canberra market in government and then we have um, certainly in our strategy uh, a vision to expand that into the private sector as well. Yeah, and I guess it's more positioned for the really big organisations at the moment. Certainly but there's big, bigger contracts, big complex yeah. contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's probably grounds that you can gradually produce Correct. a smaller product for that's it. You know, medium to large companies and that's so on. In, in fact, that, that, oh, that's part of our long-term vision is mm -hmm. actually for meet, uh, the SME um, client, clients actually put together a, uh, a cloud-based offering so that they can just dial into that as opposed to something specific for them. So we've got a clearly, we've got a clear product roadmap that we modify um, and adjust over time and one of those is in building something that can support shared services type arrangements mm. and also support um, small, a lot of the smaller agencies and the smaller contracts as well mm. and automating the processes as part of that as well. Yeah. So. Given you've gone on this journey, it's been quite a long journey, particularly for you, Graham. Would you do it again? And what would you do differently? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I spent the first probably six to 12 months uh, when we started a few years ago, um, basically doing an MBA in tech startups. So I spent a lot of time with people like yourself, Craig, um, and other um, people that have been successful in the marketplace, and I sought them out and I basically gave them our pitch and I sought their advice. Mm -hmm. um, and I found the Canberra community were incredibly giving, um, incredibly open and really honest and I found that incredibly helpful. So I did that straight away and I really don't have any regrets around doing that. It was worth the investment and it was worth the, the time out to actually go and do that. Um, do differently. Um, so if we're just talking about the Zen Enterprise as the tech startup that it is at the moment, um, I think Graham, had, having, having been there, done that before, he was able to impart a huge amount of experience, wisdom and knowledge and, and in terms of informing me um, around what worked for him before and what didn't and we're able to actually leverage off that quite a lot. And again, I suppose in a sense, Graham to me was a mentor in that, from that perspective and has been over the years. So um, yeah, so that's a good question, yeah, what, what other... What other factors um, would would we would we have changed? Um, I think still ensuring that. Um, so we've had we had a, we've had a third party developer do some of the front end development for us, um, 
and w to start with, we did have a fairly broad focus around what we wanted this software to do. So we had made some investments in, a, in some of the areas of the software to broaden the, the breadth of the different functions that it would perform. We probably could have been a little bit narrower in that, and that goes back to our previous conversation in terms of having that narrow focus about doing one thing really well. Um, so we could have done that, and that might have accelerated and saved a little bit of money, um, a little bit of effort. Um, but I think we're able to tread that line, that fine line, fairly well, um, as far as that went too. Yeah, I mean, so I, I think there's there's lots of little things that we we probably could have done a little better or, or, or smarter or wiser. But I think our overall strategy, um, I, th I think it's, I, th I think I'm pretty happy with that. So it's 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 not what not one of those things where I'd go, oh, you know, we really mucked this up. I, I, I really wish we had done it totally different. I think it's really around, around the periphery of things we probably could have um, could have improved. Um, initially, um, I, I would have loved to have had uh, um, a, a big backer and a big investor and, and been able to have the ability to just lock myself away and, 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 and just work on work on this and be financed that way. Um, in, in, now, now that I've, we've done it differently, I'm, I'm very appreciative of the, of the fact that we did do that and, we, and so we're not beholden to anybody. Um, so we, uh, we basically, you know, we own 100% of, 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 all, of all that we've got. Um, and and, and um, so I think, you know, I think we're I think pretty happy with the way we've done things. We're both really passionate and we've both got our own views and sometimes they differ. So one of the key things, and, I, and I, I'm just applying one of the marriage techniques again here, is never to let anything fester. So to raise it and bring it up. We uh, will talk daily during core phases. We will talk all the time, many times a day, um, to work issues through and we'll be very respectful of each other and we'll work those issues through on their merits. Um, and we'll, we've always been able to reach a final decision um, one way or the other that we've both backed and 100% supported because we're mm -hmm. both jointly passionate about ensuring that this succeeds. Yeah. And I um, don't know if that's a lesson learned, but certainly when we're going through some challenging times, as every tech startup will, um, we'll have disagreements or we'll have different viewpoints on things or um, we will feel that something hasn't been dealt with. Um, then raise it there and then and understand where the other person's coming from and then work it through from there is, is, is key. Yeah. yeah, a few black eyes and broken <laughs> jaws. <that's laughs> <all good. laughs> no, it, it, it sounds also like you very much you followed a bit of a tortoise approach rather than a hare approach mm -hmm. because you've been mm -hmm. uh, testing everything as you long, went along. You mm -hmm. tested you know, the, the approach to set up a tech startup. Mm -hmm. You tested your pitch. Uh, you've tested the product extensively with clients and, and, mm -hmm. and built it with them. Mm -hmm. um, and you've gone through that, you know, proof of concept phase as well. So yeah. it seems to be a lot of, you know, testing of what you do yeah. mm -hmm. and deliberate decision making rather than uh, leaping to a decision and then, you know, sort of regretting it and fixing it later. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And interesting, in some of that tech startup research I did, there was the motto of fail fast, fail early. We did the opposite to that. We, uh, if we, if we did it, if we do end up failing, we would have done it over very, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also you're you're dealing with clients who buy very slowly and Correct. make very big dollar decisions. Absolutely. So they are not well equipped to fail fast. So That's your it. approach has matched your market, which Correct. I think sometimes is more important than the than the startup mantra of, of fail fast. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's spot on. Mm. And if we fail, we're going to have a whole lot more time on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say one of the biggest takeaways um, from this whole exercise is that um, Graham and I will continue to work together. So it probably doesn't matter what what it is, uh, what we do. But we've um, it's pretty rare that you find people that you will um, trust implicitly one hundred percent. And we've certainly found that in each other. So no matter what it is, um, we will continue to, to work together. But we're hoping it's um, continuing with the Zen mm. Enterprise down the Zen Enterprise path. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and let me say, I think I think that's um, borne out by the last few years. Um, 
I let let um, Brett manage all, all the finances and things like that. I don't. Um, he's he's got all that sort of thing, and I couldn't couldn't be happier. <laughs> so I mean, so in, in, I think if you can if you can do those sorts of things and 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 just have that degree of trust and faith in 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 your partner, um, I think that's a big big thing. Um, if I was had any sort of concern or anything like that, I think we'd we'd, we'd have problems. We've we have had discussions around. So who would be the who would be the CEO or the top dog? And I insist <laughs> on Graham that it's his product. He's the one that built it. So I insist that he would be he would be he would be the final decision maker. And and I always thought through some of the tech startup stuff, they always said, "Oh, you have to have someone who would have the final say." Or but but we've been able to. Well, we haven't actually reached a point where we've had to call on that. Mm-hmm. So um, had, we haven't got to that point. There will be a stage and. Um, Graham's always saying, even when we started the business, just sort of going into the back end of how the business operates a little bit, um, I said to Graham, well, you're bringing the product to the place, uh, so you've got to have more than 50%. No, he goes, no, no, Brett, you've got to have 50%. So, I mean, that's a good problem to have mm. that we're trying to push on each other, mm. yes. a greater percentage of the organisation. Um, and we've continued down that path the whole way through. Um, in all of our decision making, we're always trying to, and, I, and then I feel guilty that I haven't put enough into the in, into the into the business. So I'm trying to put more in, and it's it's, it's a good tension, and it's it's mm. quite healthy to to have that happening um, in any tech startup. I think. Mm. Yeah, I, I think we 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 came to a very um, solid conclusion that it's a fifty fifty. You know, um, sure there. I, um, one might do a bit of bit more work on one thing than another, uh, it, but that's almost always counteracted the other way around. Um, as far as the ownership and all that's concerned, split down the middle. There's two of us split down the middle. Yeah, yeah. I it, I, I find that if tech startups get really caught up in ownership uh, battles over who owns what, uh, they they they're probably not going to succeed on other grounds because they just don't have the strength of the partnership necessary to really. Right last the distance yeah, right. as a startup. Yep. Um, I find that when people can, you know, own, ownership does come up and, and it should come up quite early in the process. I've been in a startup where uh, ownership did not come up early enough and I certainly lost out, but I was young and I didn't know better at the time. Right. Um, but, I, but I think also that you need to come to an agreement that everyone feels is fair, mm. whatever it happens to be, because, um, yeah, if, if you can't settle who owns what in the business, then it's very hard to settle some of the other decisions. Yeah, there's a, there's a fantastic lot of resources available, both in Canberra with, um, with Lighthouse, um, Entry29, um, et cetera, et cetera, Canberra Innovation Network, um, people like yourself. So, And also just I watched a, read a lot of books and watched a lot of YouTube clips, Eric Reese, Guy Kawasaki, uh, Steve Blanks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and I applied the techniques that they, um, you know, that they they talked about and and explored, and they were able to give great examples of what worked and what didn't for them. So, certainly, I enjoyed that 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 sort of research process and looking at how that would convert into Zen Enterprise and and make that successful. So while I was doing all the work, you were reading. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think now that, I see how this goes. <laughs> well, I think that's a great note to finish you on. So thank you very much, uh, Brett and Graham, or is it Graham and Brett? <laughs> um, I wish you all the best with Zen Enterprise. Uh, um, I think you know you've come a very long way since I, I first met Brett, and and he reached out and we started to have a conversation. And uh, you know I'm I'm definitely a supporter, and I wish you all the best uh, in your future endeavours. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Thanks very much, Craig. Cheers.